door than that. One thing they could consider doing is doing an overlay on the map. Just put wetlands on the map, do an overlay with the setbacks, and that has to, that has to be changed. It would be easier than doing a new map or erasing. So it shouldn't involve a lot of time to change the setbacks. Thank you. What's your wishes for the item? I move Chairman. that we refer the proposed wetlands ordinance to the ordinance committee um, with a reporting date of January 1, 1990. Would the first council meeting in January be acceptable? <laughs> oh, yeah. What about no later than so that we can, if they do move a little faster they they can. And we can get her <laughs> Just just check. Would you like to have that motion that no later than January first meeting? Yes, that's fine. I'll no later than that. the first meeting. I'll second that. First meeting. The first meeting. In January. But we'll look for it in September is what I'm getting at. <laughs> Frank will look for it in September. Do we have a comment? All those in favor, raise your hand. Those in favor? Item 27, 27, to consider the acceptance of $1,000 from People Heritage Bank from the Council Invitational Award for the Water Exploitation Team. Jesus. <laughs> the car and take any necessary action. I think the manager wants that first. Yes, it's been a long night. Uh, <laughs> the uh, Greater Portland Council of Governments has an awards program each year. Uh, that's uh, funded by People's Heritage Bank. Uh, they give three awards, one in the planning category, one in the municipal category, one in the school category. Uh, last year, Cape Elizabeth was very privileged to receive the award in the education area for the career ladder. Uh, this year, COG uh, recognized us uh, for the formation of the water extrication team uh, and also a, awarded a check uh, from People's Heritage uh, for $1,000. Uh, the uh, it would be in order for you to accept the thousand, and since it was expressly given for the water extrication team to appropriate it uh, to their account. Anybody got a comment? Councilman? I will move. So moved. Second. I believe other members were there at the band court for meeting and what have you when you see the presentation that the IG put on as far as the what team goes. And it was very well received. And at the same time, the Count of Amaral was honored as president of the Council of Governments for this coming year. We all appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Council of Reno. I think it's very interesting to note some of the comments that were made that evening at the COG banquet when the committee member doing the presentation said when it was first submitted they didn't know why it should be considered innovative. And as they looked around the greater Portland area, they discovered that it in fact was quite innovative, but not a lot of other towns had this kind of volunteer operation. And he admonished the other towns in the area to come up with something similar by <laughs> next June, <laughs> which I thought was interesting. I also think it's interesting to note the number of times our wet team has gone into action since it's been formed. It was seemed to be we didn't need it until it was organized, and then we've needed it a lot. And I'm, you know, I'm very thankful that we have it. I've seen them do some of their practicing at Fort Williams, and it's most impressive. Yes, I was there and certainly applaud, applauded with all of us with regard to this uh, wonderful group in the Cape. And, and even since they received this award, as uh, indicated in the Portland Press Herald uh, July 6th, they again came to the rescue of a 21-foot Jamie E. Uh, off the western edge of Richmond Island. Both Doug Tinsman and Stephen Jordan um, arrived in boats and, and were both uh, instrumental uh, in rescuing uh, two of the individuals in a capsized vessel. So again, our kudos go to this extraordinary group. Everybody understand the motion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? That winds up the agenda of the citizen discussion. What about 28? 
Okay. Item 28. Is there a new Taking item? Oh, excuse me. I didn't know that. Item to come up on the roll. Anyone like to make a motion? I would move we, we uh, suspend the rules to take item uh, 28 and consider it this evening. Second. 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 All those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? Would you like to have that one, sir? Uh, this is a situation. Second, your main meeting, you approved a special sewer connection assessment for uh, someone had paid the $600 fee and their check bounced. And uh, uh, Debbie Pizzo tried on numerous occasions to. Uh, to get them to uh, back up the check and uh, we still have a bounce check on our hands. Uh, right after your May meeting, the property was sold to a new owner uh, and the state law provides that at the time taxes are committed is when you actually commit this assessment. Uh, so that because there's now a new property owner, I would ask that you, uh, you revoke the earlier uh, uh, commitment and substitute uh, this new commitment for it to, uh, you've got to, uh, Harvey Madoff, trustee of HM2 Realty uh, for uh, MAP U12, Lot 75. So moved. Second. Any other comment? Um, question. Is this the same amount, $600? Yes. It's not more. Any other comments? All those in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Citizens just items not on the agenda. Not there. We have a, a couple of announcements here and we have a gentleman that has spoken at 9 o'clock if you speak and then basically waiting here. But again, we had a communication breakdown with five Andy Strat being here and we see the involvement championship class B tennis team and I will see the team who presented at it. Either a way to date or impressive. And unless the job is here freaking uh, our ways to rep. And he has a few comments that he would like to throw out. And uh, I believe that uh, maybe we should uh, stay in session while he throws that out and then we'll adjourn. Okay? Mm -hmm. Lester. Good evening. Uh, Billy asked me that uh, maybe I might come and give you a short uh, report of what is or is not happening at IWS. Uh, first of all, uh, the uh, trashed energy plant is uh, producing well, uh, operating well. Uh, we are presently in the budget process. The budget should have been passed uh, July 1st. Uh, we did pass an interim budget, and, and the reason why we, we didn't pass the full budget is because we're in the process of, <coughs> of uh, obtaining a, an operator for the plant. And until we know who that operator is and how much that operator is going to cost us, we can't finish the budget. Um, we had two finalists, uh, AEC, Cy Mueller, and CGC, uh, which is an outfit in Europe, uh, and sort of back in our minds, we also had IWS as a, as a third operator. As you know, IWS has been operating the plant for at least the last nine months. <coughs> uh, when the two finalists came in with their proposals, uh, it, it turned out that one really didn't want to give us any guarantees uh, or, uh, or use any of their money if, if something went, went wrong. And why we were looking for outside operators is we were trying to gain back some of those guarantees that we used to have with Dravo. And as you know, we, we lost those when Dravo decided to get out of business. So we were trying to gain some of that back. And uh, with one of the outside operators, they, they didn't seem to want to put up any money, so we would get the hit anyway. 
with the other operator, they wouldn't even consider, consider putting that money. They were just going to walk if things didn't look right. So, so we went to the full board uh, the last time we met, uh, which I don't remember we meet so often, but two or three days ago, uh, and asked the full board if, and I'm serving on the selection committee right now for the, the, the selection committee actually asked the full board if, if they wanted us to consider IWS, and the uh, full board said yes, so we, we officially now have three in the running to operate, which is IWS <coughs> as one of them. And uh, actually, it, it, uh, uh, in the selection committee, it, it came down as sort of a split vote. Uh, we couldn't make a real determination. Uh, actually, it was three, three, and three it turned out to be. No matter, uh, first of all, it was two, two, and two, and then, then three, three, and three. So on the voting process. So, uh, so now we can go back and, and, and uh, we've asked the AEC and, and CGC to uh, reconsider if they would, if they would uh, perhaps give us some guarantees. So I don't know, I haven't seen that yet, but when we go through that process, it may turn out that, that we do select IWS. Presently under the, under the, under this thinking, it would cost us, the first year, it would cost us a million dollars less to run the plant if IWS ran it. And so if they aren't gonna give us any guarantees, uh, a lot of us don't think that, that we should be giving them a million dollars for nothing. So that, that's the scenario, and I, and I don't know exactly, we haven't set up a meeting yet for that, so I, I don't know when that's gonna happen. Uh, in the budget process, uh, probably some of you uh, were kind of dissatisfied with the tipping fee. Uh, we told all the towns that it wouldn't be more than thirty dollars a ton, and it turned out in the in the, in the budget that it would be about thirty three fifty. There are quite a few members of the board that aren't too happy with this, so uh, we're working on that and, and in the interim budget that we did pass we kept the municipal side at at thirty dollars now when we actually pass the budget i don't know what that's going to be but i think the majority as i see it i think the majority is going to try to keep that pretty nearly the thirty dollars <coughs> and the reason really that the the tipping fee has skyrocketed is uh, well about two reasons uh, one is we went from a variable rate to a fixed rate, uh, which costs us uh, much more than, than, than that variable rate. We were lucky with, when we had that variable rate and we, we did very well with it, but, but we, we really needed to get into that fixed rate so that, because this plant's gonna run for 20, 25 years, I hope, and the, and, uh, and, and the, and the bond, of course, was for 20 years, and you don't know what's, what's gonna happen 10 years from now, so. I think we were wise doing that. The other thing that uh, seems to uh, concern us a little bit is uh, we feel that all the waste that's due us isn't coming to us, so that well, I think we're losing out on on uh, some revenue there. Uh, and I think we're going to work on that. We may even employ a detective or something and follow some of these. Uh, commercial haulers to see where they're going. And as you know, with a waste handling agreement, uh, all the waste created in Cape Elizabeth is supposed to go there. So I might ask this question. I, I, I noticed here in town that we have about three commercial haulers, uh, mainly waste, waste management, and what's the other one? The Mellon. Tweedy? Oh. Tweedy's disposal oh, service, yeah. Dan Mellon. And so I might ask this question, do you know when they leave this town, whether they go? I mean, we're supposed to make sure that they go to regional waste with that waste, and, and I think this is, this is happening throughout the region. Uh, there's one town in particular that we're very uh, suspicious of. I, I don't want to 
say that in public tonight, which one it is, but they know who they are. Excuse me, Lester, where could they go that would be cheaper? Uh, down Benefit. Really? Yes. Cheaper? Uh, and I don't know, I, I, nearby, that would be the nearest one nearby. They could go quite a lot cheaper, presently. What are the tipping fees down there? Some of them, some of them are as low as eight dollars. Uh, it's not going to last yeah. uh, after some of the contracts run out, and, uh, or or they may. Well, I, I, I refuse to discuss. I, I don't want to be into that. That's that's uh, that's another problem altogether. Uh, and one other thing that we have done at Regional Waste is. Um, We've authorized, uh, we really haven't authorized the money yet because we haven't approved the budget, but we authorized uh, Chuck Fauché to hire a recycling coordinator. And uh, he's going to be with the regional waste systems and hopefully helping all the towns, all the 20 communities in their recycling projects. We think it's well worth it. On the uh, on the other note, uh, the demolition project. Uh, now that is going to be under RWS. We we're going to do the bonding. Uh, presently, we're working on a short time uh, loan through local banks to buy the property, and uh, and we. Just the last meeting, we voted to accept the towns of Gorham, Westbrook. I should guess I'll have to get my notes out. Uh, All right. uh, and Sebago, Standish, Naples, New Gloucester, and Raymond. Now we that, that will that will uh, add uh, another what 26? There'll be 26 towns. Now in RWS demolition. They will have votes only pertaining to the demolition project, not, not the incinerator. Uh, they may not all join, but we, accept, we, 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 we voted to accept them if they want to come, and, and, and they're going to have to sign that uh, interlocal agreement, and I'm sure that they, they will come because even with you, uh, the town of Cape Elizabeth, you're going to have to sign another interlocal agreement to go in on the demolition project. Pretty much the same as the, the wording, pretty closely the same as is, is what we have now for IWS. And really, I, I don't feel that you have much of a choice. Uh, the only thing presently that we can tell you is that it's a lot less expensive to go as a group with this thing than it ever would be to go on your own. Uh, I hate to say that we really don't know what the cost is going to be yet. They're working on it. <coughs> but the, the only more or less guarantee that we can give is that it's a lot less expensive to go as a group of, say, 26 towns than it is. In fact, you probably can't even find a place in, that you could license with DEP here in the town of Cape Elizabeth to do that. Uh, we've discussed uh, some of the things that we will accept there. Uh, construction, demolition, debris. Uh, re resulting from construction, remodeling, repair, and demolition of structures. It includes, but is not limited to, building materials, asphalt, wall, board, pipes, metal, conduits, mattresses, household furniture, fish nets, rope, hose, wire, and cable, fencing, carpet, uh, carpeting, and underlay. It excludes asbestos and other special waste. Uh, and special waste uh, such as maybe oil soap. In this case we have a, say we had an oil spill out here and they cleaned up oily soaked seaweed or oily soaked gravel or something like that. That would be a special waste. This, things like that. There's a long list of special ways that probably we won't accept. Uh, and I don't see it here, but it does 
we we, we do uh, uh, we will be taking white goods and uh, and tires. Uh, any questions? I guess I don't know why I covered everything that's going on or not. Uh, Thank you, Lester, for coming up and kind of bringing us up to date. I have one question. Where are we at with uh, that committee and our reps as far as uh, the demolition committee? They had a meeting coming up. We They had one there in July. That kind of a, was it July? At the end of June, I guess it was. Well, we've had lots of, I don't know exactly which one you... I'm talking uh, about the special committee as far as the demolition and the Ross Grant site. And they wanted two rep people. Well, that 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 meeting has been held. Uh, it's over with. Uh, now it's back to normal, so to speak. Uh, we're going to have a demolition policy committee, uh, a demolition uh, board uh, made up of 26 towns, and each town will have to have their. Representative, right now, presently on the demolition policy committee, I'm I'm was appointed by RWS to represent RWS. I've also represented the town of Cape Elizabeth, so to speak. But uh, it, it's possible that you may need to, to to select someone for the town of Cape Elizabeth. Well, I believe Nancy, didn't you agree to that? Well, that was that I one. But I forgot about the meeting. Yeah, that was that was yeah, really I. I inquired about that and that was primarily just for that one informational meeting yeah. uh, now I guess I can't really answer whether she should be going to some of these other meetings or not I think what that meeting was is back when the project was a, a combined effort of the Greater Portland Council of Governments and Regional Waste Systems within the last month the the project has moved under the umbrella of Regional Waste Systems since they found that uh, their enabling uh, authority allowed them to do that. So right. we don't need that other committee then? You still may need, they may ask for other people to be appointed, or they may decide that the, the existing regional waste representative supplemented by the, com the representatives of those new communities might uh, serve uh, concurrently on, on both committees, rather than have a separate group of people uh, there, go to a meeting. There are a host of policies that that have to be made yet, uh, and that that policy hasn't been made, uh, but it, I, I'm sure it will be in the future, near future. Anybody else? Well, I want to thank you again. You spent a tremendous amount of time. In that. Thank you, Lester. Tremendous. Thank you, Lester, yes. for all the time you put in. I believe, other than just remember the July 20th of the meeting. We had. Mr. Chairman, go I'd like to move that we go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter. Can we hear a second? Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Excuse me, but can you, can you go into executive session when it hasn't been advertised before? Well, you, you suspend the rules to take up an item out of order, uh, then you take up the item to, to enter an executive session to discuss the personnel matter. Well, let me back up one. I move that we suspend the council rules to take an item out of order. Item 29. Do you have to give it a number? Sure. Can I, can I clarify yes. uh, the uh, motion? I, is it exactly a personnel matter? That's my understanding of the situation. Yeah, it's the memorandum in your packet uh, regarding a personnel matter. The other, the other question I have is if we're going into executive session to take up a personnel matter, that person is supposed to be consulted and asked to be at that executive session that you're discussing. So I, the fact that there was no notice that there was going to be an executive session tonight and that the person that uh, is going to uh, be discussed has not been told that there is and is not here, uh, I don't think we should be going into executive session on this matter. If, if what Councillor Amro said is, right. is true, that the person must be present, absolutely. They don't have to be present, but they should be notified. Notified. Notified, notified. okay. If it's, you know, I think the issue is if, 
<coughs> my memorandum to the council said that uh, if you wanted to discuss this sometime, to uh, you know, as a council to to let me know, and, you know, maybe you know, I think Mrs. Ambrose is correct, and you know, if that is the case, you should, uh, you know, if you do want to discuss it at some time, let me know, and uh, I'll invite the individual, uh, let them know uh, that the topic is going to be discussed. Of course, the other way is, is to have a have a more generalized discussion of. Uh, that range of issues that, that are being dealt with uh, and what the council's feeling is rather dis rather than discussing the, the specifics of this one situation. Well, if we do not have the uh, <coughs> executive uh, session this evening, uh, does the reason for the executive session then fall um, moot because of other meetings that will take place before the council could meet again as a body uh, with the individual if that person so desired to join the council. No, the, the, the issue involved is not expected to be heard in the, in the next month. I withdraw my motion. I move that we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Those opposed? Okay. You know what? We're going to put it on the agenda the next time. I, I didn't hear one way or the other. Well, let's have a consensus. I'd like to see it on the agenda in August. I would also. So I'll invite the first and let them know that mm -hmm. it is going yeah. to be discussed. Discussed. Do we have anything about that issue in our ordinances? No, it's simply state statute. Just a simple statement, but no elaboration. Yeah, I, there is nothing, you know, I think the council's had, you know, has, has dealt with it individually, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as a council and as, as individuals on the council, but not in relation other to other, other folks. See no evil, no evil, you Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yes, we it would be nice if it would resolve itself anything that uh, I'm meeting my cousin. Uh, he's been, uh, you know, 